Today we're going to be working in Blender 2.57 uh, and working with the game engine to make objects invisible and or visible. So let's have a quick look here. Uh, this is a viewer's question. Um, let me quickly just add some stuff here and set our scene up. I'm going to add a plane, scale it up. We go into front view and make sure the plane's down here. That's our ground. I'm going to choose our default cube there. And I'm going to change the render engine to the Blender game engine. And under the physics tab with the cube selected, I'm going to make it a, make it a rigid body with a collision bounds of a box. And I'm going to clone it with Shift D, move it on the X axis. Do the same thing again. And then we'll take all those, clone them on the z-axis. Do it one more time. And we'll go into our camera view and we'll move our camera out. So we can see it all. And we'll also move our lighting source so that we can actually see what's going on. Go back into shaded mode here, or yeah, hit P. There are cubes, they all kind of fell down on each other. If I was to move one of these cubes out like so and hit P, you can see the one in the middle falls because it doesn't have that box under it to hold it up. Let's uh, control Z to undo that and throw that cube back there, play out again, you can see it's being held. So now what I want to do is I want to make this cube invisible. Well, under the physics engine or physics tab with that cube selected, there's a visibility button right here that says invisible. We'll check that and we will hit P and you can see that it is invisible, but it's still holding up that box above it. So it's still there. It's just invisible. But I should also mention that if you look up here in our object, a uh, little scene window here that doing that basically is unchecking the render option there. You can see the little camera right there isn't clicked anymore. Well, that means that if we render this out with F12, it's also invisible. So keep that in mind in case you plan on rendering stuff out as well as using it in the game engine, that the invisibility button basically just turns off rendering for that option. And you can always turn it back on just by pressing it again. Well, that was pretty simple, not much of a tutorial, so let's take it a step further and uh, basically make it so that we can um, affect the visibility of an object while in gameplay, while the game is going on. So quickly, I'm going to just uh, move this up and line it up. Oops, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Join that area, move it up like that so it's lined up here, just so I can join it this way. I know there's a default for the game engine. I'm not thrilled with it. I just want to add the logic editor down here and I want the full width of my screen while I'm doing it. And we'll go to logic editor. And with that cube selected, uh, which is currently visible, if we hit P, we're gonna add a sensor and we're gonna control its visibility with the keyboard. So I'm gonna choose keyboard as a sensor and I'm going to click key and press spacebar so that the spacebar controls it. But obviously you can use other sensors. You can make something invisible or visible when the player gets close to it or some other object or on collision, whatever you'd like. And under actuators here, there is an option for visibility. Let's connect these like so. So right now when we press spacebar, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to make it visible. Well, it's already visible. Let's uncheck that and come up here and press P with the cursor over the 3D view. And I'll hit spacebar and ooh, it goes invisible. If I press spacebar again though, it doesn't make it reappear because currently we have spacebar set just to make it invisible. To escape to get out of that, let's also zoom in a little bit so that next time we go into game mode, we can see things a little bit better. So how can we set it? So every time we press the spacebar, it will make it invisible if it's already visible and make it visible if it's invisible. Did I say that backwards? You know what I mean. Well, we can set properties, and if a property value equals something, make it invisible. If it equals something else, make it not invisible. Yes. So we're going to, I guess that would be visible. Anyway, we're going to add a property here. Make sure you have that cube selected. I'm going to rename this property just viz for visible. And I'm going to change it from floating to integer. 
and by default it's set to zero. That's great. Uh, now we're going to leave this space bar. So when space bar is pressed, then it's going to, and here we're going to change this to property. We're going to take the viz property, which is this property over here, and we're going to take its value and we're going to say viz plus one. So it's taking whatever viz, viz equals and adding one to it. So currently it's at zero. So when we press spacebar, it should equal one. If I press spacebar again, it should equal two, three, four. So let's check that out by checking this little I here, which if you hover over it says, print debug information for this property. Now, if you start the game mode, it's not gonna automatically show that. You have to come up here and click game and go to show debug properties. Now, if I hit P, you'll notice up in the top left corner of our 3D view here, it says cube.004 dot viz equals zero. If I press spacebar, it now equals one. Again, it equals two, three, four, five. We don't want that. We keep on going on forever. We want it to just equal zero or one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another sensor for that object. Once again, make sure you still have that cube selected. And we're gonna say property, and we're gonna say viz. And we're gonna say when viz equals two, then we're going to change the property of viz to equal zero. So anytime that viz equals two, we're all automatically reset it to zero. So now if we start the game up and I hit P here, I'll hit spacebar, you can see it equals one. If I hit spacebar again, it goes right back to two. In reality, it's, I mean, right back to zero. In reality, it's going to two, but the computer's checking it so fast, seeing that it's equal to two, and it's converting it back to zero. So that's just what we want. Spacebar, it's gonna equal one or zero on or off. And then we're gonna add one more little set of logic bricks here. We're gonna say sensor, and we're gonna say property, and we're gonna say if the property here ever equals uh, one, then we are going to change the visibility to, I'm sorry, wait, I need to check what I did up here. Okay, so spacebar does that, da, 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 da. Okay, we're going to say if it equals one, it will be visible. And if it equals, this equals zero, then make the visibility invisible. Connect this here, connect that there. Now, if we start up, you can see by default it's invisible. That's because we're starting with a property of zero. If you want to start it visible, we can change this to one. Start it up, it's visible. Our value equals one, as you can see in the top left corner. If I hit spacebar, it is invisible. Spacebar again, it is visible again. Invisible, visible, invisible, visible. And you can see the property changing up there in the top left corner. Of course, you wouldn't want that in actual gameplay. So we're going to turn off show debug properties now that everything's working. And we can just keep hitting spacebar, making that visible and invisible. Yet it's still there because it's still holding up that cube above it. And that's working with object visibility in Blender 3D, Blender 2.7 or 5.7 game engine. I thank you for watching. Please visit the links in the description. Um, I'll try to upload this blend file in the uh, post on my site for this video. Also check out our Facebook page, which is also in the link. We also have links to IRC. We're on Freenode at Pound Films by Chris. And I just hope to hear from you, and I hope you keep on watching, and I hope that you have a great day.